Alberta is considering raising speed limits on its major divided highways from 110 to 120 km per hour. The public survey shows strong support, with 68% of respondents backing the increase. But this proposal raises a critical question, is our infrastructure truly ready for higher level speeds? The difference between a safe high-speed highway and a dangerous one comes down to one key design principle, controlled access. A divided highway with a wide median is not the same as a true freeway designed for high-speed travel. Today we're going to compare three of Alberta's divided highways, the QE2, Highway 16, and Highway 63, against the gold standard for high-speed travel, Germany's Autobahn. We'll look at the specific design elements that make 120 km per hour safe and examine where Alberta's roads fall short. The core argument is simple. True safety requires more than just a posted sign. It demands infrastructure engineered for the speed you intend to allow. What exactly makes the Autobahn so special? It's not just about having no speed limit on certain sections. It's about a complete system engineered for predictability and safety at high velocities. The foundation of this system is controlled access. This means no at-grade intersections, no direct driveways, and no opportunity for slow-moving vehicles or pedestrians to enter the traffic flow unexpectedly. Access is strictly managed through interchanges with dedicated acceleration and deceleration lanes. This eliminates the most dangerous conflict points before they can even occur. The geometric design of the Autobahn is built to a higher standard. We're talking about specific lane widths, shoulder widths, and curves that are calculated for stability at high speeds. A standard lane on the Autobahn is 3.75 meters wide with paved shoulders of the same width. This allows for error recovery. The median isn't just a grassy ditch, it's a continuous crash-tested barrier system designed to prevent crossover collisions. In Alberta, highway lane widths vary from 3.5 meters to 3.7 meters. This may not sound like a big difference, but when you're traveling at 120 kilometers per hour or more, this can be the difference between a near-miss and a fatality. In Germany, the safety infrastructure extends beyond the pavement. Traffic flow is managed differently. There are often minimum speed limits to prevent large speed differentials, and lane discipline is strictly enforced, with the left lane reserved purely for passing. The entire system is built on a principle of predictability. When every vehicle is moving at a high speed and every entry and exit point is designed to minimize disruption, the risk of a conflict drops dramatically. This is why sections of the Autobahn can safely operate without a blanket speed limit. The road itself manages the risk to a high degree. Now, let's turn our attention to Alberta's reality. The government survey focuses on non-urban divided highways, including portions of highways 1, 2, 16, and 63. These are critical economic corridors, but how do they measure up to the Autobahn standard? The answer varies significantly from one road to the next, and the presence of at-grade intersections is the most critical factor. First, the QE2 or Highway 2. This is Alberta's busiest highway, connecting Calgary and Edmonton. While large sections between the two cities are built to a high standard with interchanges, there are still numerous at-grade intersections, particularly as you approach smaller towns like Olds or Innisfail. These create unpredictable conflict points where high speed through traffic mixes with vehicles turning left or right or even crossing the highway. The overall geometry is generally good because this highway is flat and fairly straight, but these access points represent a fundamental design compromise that you would not find on a true freeway. Next, the Yellowhead Highway, or Highway 16. This Trans-Canada route stretches across the province, and its character changes dramatically. West of Edmonton, towards Jasper, the highway is mostly a two-lane undivided road. The divided sections that do exist, particularly east of Edmonton towards Lloydminster, are a mix of interchanges and at-grade intersections. In many rural areas, you'll find direct access to farms and fields. This creates a scenario where a vehicle traveling 120 km per hour could suddenly encounter a slow-moving tractor pulling out from a driveway. The speed differential is immense, and the stopping distance required is far greater than on a controlled access highway. The geometry of these older divided sections can also be tighter, with narrower lanes and shoulders compared to modern standards. Finally, Highway 63 to Fort McMurray. This is a high-volume corridor servicing the oil sands region. For years it was known as a dangerous two-lane highway, and significant investment has been made to twin it. However, even on the newly twinned sections, the issue of access management remains. There are still numerous at-grade intersections and direct property access points along the route. The combination of high traffic volume, long-distance commuters, and these conflict points creates a risky environment. Raising the speed limit here would amplify those risks. 
The stopping distance from 120 km per hour is substantially longer than from 110 km per hour. We're talking about approximately 15 meters or three mid-sized car lengths. At an intersection, that extra 10 km per hour could be the difference between a near miss and a tragic collision. While Alberta has some high-quality divided highways, very few segments qualify as true controlled access freeways. The persistent presence of intersections, driveways, and direct property access means these roads operate with a level of unpredictability that is fundamentally at odds with the principles of high-speed safety engineering seen on the Autobahn. So what is the realistic path forward? Simply putting up 120 km per hour signs on corridors like Highway 2, or sections of Highway 16 with at-grade intersections would be irresponsible. In my view, the infrastructure in many key corridors has not yet been upgraded to the standard that would safely support a blanket increase to 120 km per hour. The solution requires a more nuanced, safety-first approach. We essentially have two options. The first, and ideal, option is to invest in the comprehensive upgrades needed to bring these highways up to true controlled access standards. This means building overpasses to eliminate the most dangerous at-grade intersections, consolidating and relocating direct property accesses, and ensuring geometric designs like lane widths and curved sections meet modern high-speed specifications. This is, without a doubt, a costly and long-term endeavor. The second, more immediately feasible option is to adopt a targeted approach. This means only raising speed limits on segments that are already built to a true freeway standard. Sections that have full interchanges, no at-grade crossings, and robust geometric design. The middle of the QE2 between Calgary and Red Deer, for example, might be a candidate for a pilot project. The policy must be clear. Speed limits should follow infrastructure quality, not precede it. The goal should be to build highways that are safe by design, not just by posted limit. The core finding from this analysis is undeniable. Infrastructure design, not the number on a sign, is the ultimate factor of a road's safe operating speed. The proposal to raise limits to 120 km per hour highlights a critical need to reevaluate our highway standards. If we want higher level speeds, we must be willing to invest in better infrastructure. The public consultation on this issue is open now. I encourage you to engage with it and advocate for a strategy that prioritizes long-term safety over short-term convenience. The goal should be to build a highway network where high speeds are a safe byproduct of excellent engineering. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know how you feel about the proposed speed limit increase in the comments below. Is the infrastructure status quo good enough? Take care and I'll see you in the next one.